This is part three of Understanding Digital Certificates. So let's continue. So far we've looked at how a CA functions, but what happens when one CA needs to trust another CA? Well, public key infrastructures use a process called trust models to accomplish this. There are a number of different trust models utilized in PKI. There is subordinated hierarchy, cross-certified mesh, hybrid bridge CA, trust list. The difference between each of these is the relationship that one CA has to another. Within all models, though, cross-certification, the certification of one CA by another, is the fundamental technique used to compose certification paths. Some models constrain the subsets of CAs which are eligible to cross-certify one another, and cross-certification can be reciprocal. It's often valid for CA A to certify CA B, independent of whether or not CA B certifies, or is even eligible, to certify CA A. Now, here's an illustration of the most common trust model, hierarchical. It's important to notice that trust always flows up from the end users up to the top of the structure, the root CA. Now I want to take a little time to talk about digital signatures. Many students confuse digital signatures with digital certificates and I don't want you to do this. Despite their similar names, they are not the same and perform different functions. At their very basic, Digital signatures are used to attempt to guarantee the identity of the person sending data from one point to another. The basic design of a digital signature is as follows. A small amount of data is encrypted using a prescribed algorithm. This small amount of data is bound to the core data being sent as well as to the identity of the sender, which may often be a public key. This provides the authentic signature with the key so the recipient can verify the digital signature on any data sent with that signature, thus ensuring that the data is unmodified and sent by the authentic sender. If the data were modified, the digital signature would be damaged by that modification and that would then prove that the integrity of the data has been compromised. When creating a digital signature, the software being used to generate the signature sends the data being transferred through what's known as a hash algorithm. It's important to remember that hashing algorithms are not used to encrypt data. After the data is sent through the hash, an output is generated in the form of a fixed size chunk of data called a message digest. This message digest is unique for every chunk of data passed through the hash algorithm and the receiver of the data can perform a similar hash function and if the values match then the receiver knows that the data has not been modified in transmission. A digital signature hash algorithm should be able to guarantee the following. The original data cannot be recreated out of the message digest and vice versa. There should never be replication of a message digest between two separate files because the algorithm used should create entirely different end results when the data passes through the hash. Message digest should always be generated by using the entire piece of the data being sent. Thus, if you're downloading a file uh, from a website, you must wait until the entire file is downloaded before you can run the hash process to verify the file. Here are some other related specifications you might encounter on the exam. Certified Enrollment Protocol, or CEP, was created by VeriSign for Cisco to allow Cisco devices to acquire and use digital certificates from CAs, and it includes support for RAs, registration authorities, certificate enrollment, revocation, and those all-important CRLs. Now, Certificate Management Protocol, CMP, defines mechanisms for advanced management of digital certificates. Functions include certificate issuance, exchange, invalidation, revocation, and key commission. One advantage of CMP is that it is able to operate on any transport protocol. 
Another nice thing about CMP is that it includes mechanisms for performing all of its functions either online or offline using files, emails, tokens, or web functions. Oh, and just in case you wanted to look it up, it's all specified in RFC 4210. PKIX is one of the two main standards developed for implementing public key infrastructure. Now, public key infrastructure for X509 certificates, that's what PKIX is, was established as a working group way back in 1995 by the IETF to create standards for X.509 based PKIs. It's primarily concerned with management and operation protocols, certificate policies, and certificate practices, along with data timestamping and data validation services. PKCS is another one of the main standards created for PKI. It was created back by RSA Labs to fill in some of the gaps of the other PKI standards. The Public Key Cryptography Standards, PKCS, were produced in an effort to generate a globally accepted specification for the development of PKI solutions. PKCS is made up of a library of 15 different specifications covering encryption and cryptography standards. Unfortunately, many of these have been phased out over time. Now, X.509 standard is a set of specifications used in assembling and formatting digital certificates and encrypting the data within them. Each X.509 implementation makes use of a root CA, that's the top of the structure, that issues the digital certificates, extracts the attached public key, and assures it is trusted. This was originally developed back in 1988, and the current version of this that's in use now is version 3. Now, many students get confused between the X.509 and the X.500 specifications. These are not the same thing, and you want to watch out for those exam questions that try and trip you up on this. X.500 is a computer network standard that defines directory services, including LDAP, things like Microsoft Active Directory, Novell Netware, use directory services. X.509 is that portion of the X.500 standard which defines the structure of digital certificates and PKI. Well, we've covered a number of important documents from Domain 5 of the Security Plus 2008 exam, including digital certificates, certificate authorities, registration authorities, public key infrastructure, digital signatures, X.500, X.509. I hope that you will find this information helpful to you as you prepare for your exam. I want to wish you good luck on your exam, and thank you for watching. Thank you.